For nearly 100 years now, chemists have been arguing about aspects of chemical bonding and what it is. And nowhere else, arguably, is this more important than down at the bottom of the periodic table, where we need to understand how elements like uranium and thorium bond. And some of my colleagues have actually done this here at Manchester using a technique called electron paramagnetic resonance spectroscopy. We've got lots of nuclear waste that needs dealing with. And the way that you might tackle the problem would be to reduce the volume and take the very small quantity of highly radioactive waste out of that very large volume of mostly okay stuff that you can recycle. We have uh, studied two compounds, one of the thorium and uranium complex. Uh, we have tried to use uh, a technique which is called EPR spectroscopy in a much modern version using pulses in, instead of continuous wave. This has been applied to actinide chemistry for the first time in these complexes. The issue with the actinides, which is the very heavy elements at the bottom of the periodic table, they're normally just grouped away separate from the rest of the periodic table that you'd seen in high school, is that they're radioactive. If we understand how actinides bond, then we're in a position to better understand the chemistry of these metals and control that chemistry. And if we can use these techniques to understand how uh, the metals bond to other things, then we can design those other things to actually do specific chemistry at the metal. We all know that atoms bond with each other to make molecules that make materials that you and I can see. But actually understanding the nature of those chemical bonds is still ironically, even though the concept is very easy to grasp, the detail can be very elusive. There are two extreme models of chemical bonding. One is ionic, where it's purely based on charge. You have a, a positively charged ion called a cation, a negatively charged ion called an anion. And there's nothing shared between them. The other extreme model of bonding is called covalent bonding, where electrons from the metal and from the atom it's connected to are shared. And these, of course, are two extremes, and there's, a, there's an entire gradation between these two extremes. The question that has uh, not been answered, really, for actinides is where in that spectrum of bonding does it lie? The molecular structure is here where we have an actinide complex which is the metal in the middle and we have the ligands here. If the electron which is localized on the metal is interacting with the nuclear spins of some atoms which are on the ligand you can capture that type of interaction. So electron paramagnetic resonance allow to quantify the strength of interaction of your electron with the nuclear spin of protons, but also of carbons on the ligands. So the collaboration that we built to make this paper is that we needed chemists to make new complexes and other physical scientists to measure the physical properties. So our group is a synthetic chemistry group. We make the things that are hard to make, and then with these complexes in hand, we can then collaborate with the expert physical scientists that we have over the road, and then they're able to perform these specialist measurements on them. So it's a combination that's unique to Manchester. This study is really exciting because it really puts down a first step on a road to finally getting to grips with and solving this long-running argument that we've had about the nature of chemical bonding between elements. Mm -hmm.